uh, in this video we will be working out same pattern of questions that is to identify subheads and major heads but we will be doing under this asset section. Illustration 24 we will work out give the heads under which following items are shown in company's balance sheet as per schedule 3 of companies act 2013. So, under which heads means you have to write both subheads and major heads. So, draw the format again. Illustration number 24. So, before you work out this question, just go through that asset section examples and all you just read. Subhead and major head. First one, mortgage loan. Okay, this is not from assets, this is a combined question given there. Yeah, this is a combined question because mortgage loan means something you have taken. So, it is coming under the subhead long term borrowing and the major head is non-current liabilities. Actually, you can draw a small column for serial number. My column is big. Uh, this subheads and major heads and all, you draw big columns. Uh, second one, patents. Patents, yes, it is intangible asset. So, you can write subhead like this. Fixed assets, put a hyphen and write intangible. Because fixed assets is not the major head. The major head is non-current assets, isn't it? Which is divided into fixed assets, which is again divided into tangible, intangible, capital, work in progress, intangible assets under development. So, when you write the subhead, you have to write like this, fixed assets, put a hyphen and write intangible. Then major head will be non-current assets. Third one is investments, ok, investments, nothing mentioned means take it as a long term investment, subhead will be non current investment and the major head will be same like previous one non current assets. If you see the balance sheet, this is how they have written. Investments, if they specify like short term, then you must consider under current assets. Then fourth one, general reserve, since it is specified as reserve. The subhead is reserves and surplus and the major head is shareholders fund. Fifth one, bills receivable, bills receivable coming under the subhead trade receivables, don't write trade payables, this is trade receivable, the major head will be current asset, that is fifth one. Subhead is trade receivables, item is bills receivable, so the major head will be current assets. <coughs> Then sixth one, 10 percentage debentures, debentures what is the nature, subhead is long term borrowing, the major head is non current liabilities.
okay okay the next question we'll work out illustration 25 same format you draw the first item there is tax reserve again it is uh, reserve so the subhead will be reserves and surplus the major head will be shareholders fund tax reserve don't write the reverse under subhead if you write shareholders fund and under major head if you write reserves and surplus you will not get any marks so make sure you are writing according to your heading this is shareholders fund second one interest on calls in advance calls in advance uh, if you turn your page and see that other current liabilities calls in advance is coming there as an example interest on calls in advance again it is related to that um, that means calling in advance it's kind of liability for you it's other long other non current sorry other current liabilities and the major head is current liability okay calls in advance also the same same answer so interest on calls in advance third one stores and spares you have seen this item where did you see this under asset section when we discussed inventory so the subhead is inventory and the major head is current asset fourth one premium on redemption of debentures we discussed before the subhead will be long term other long term liabilities and just write other long term liabilities okay then the major head will be non current liability premium on redemption of yes debentures uh, preference shares also the same subhead and major head is it the fourth one next is fifth one loose tools loose tools coming under inventory just like stores and spares and the major head is current asset that also we have seen under inventory section then balances with banks cash in hand cash at bank all these included under cash and cash equivalents and the major head will be current asset item is balances with bank uh, the question is actually over uh, i'll do two more items uh, that is from the other question illustration number 26 you don't have to draw a separate column and all now for the time being for exam if it is a separate question you draw a separate format and do but now illustration 26 
uh, first one subsidiary reserve that you can um, answer it. It's reserves and surplus shareholders fund. The other two we'll write here. Just extend your format and write here itself. And if you want, you just write here illustration 26 in that margin. Uh, mining rights, okay. Mining rights means it is intangible asset for you. So, subhead is fixed assets. Is it in progress or something? Uh, no. So, fixed assets. You can write intangible assets and the major head can be non-current asset. Then the next one also we will include here as eighth our item that is provision for doubtful debts or uh, provision for it can be called as provision for bad debts also okay provision for doubtful debts it's familiar item to all of you uh, the basic nature is we know that this provisions and all basic nature is liability because we are keeping aside out of profit and it is a current liability the basic nature but how will you show this item in the balance sheet from debtors we will less this provision for doubtful debts or provision for bad debts so that is how you have to write the subhead deducted from from debtors debtors means which is a subhead for debtors it is trade receivables and the major head for this will be trade receivables and all coming under current assets. So, do not write current liability. The basic nature is uh, current liability, yes, correct. But here, when they say like provision for doubtful debts, how will you show this item usually in the balance sheet? It will be shown as a deduction from trade receivables. Debtors, less provision, that is the usual pattern. So, we have to write like that itself. It is deduction from trade receivables and so the major head will not be current liability though the basic nature is current liability now we are showing it under current assets but as a deduction okay why it is deducted because it is basically a current liability so this is how you have to write uh, then illustration 27 now onwards almost uh, all items will be familiar to you only certain items are new uh, so, I am not doing illustration 27, but you have to do, I will just discuss, ok. The same format um, you have to draw. If you want, you can just continue in this format itself, just give serial number 9, you can continue. These new items only you need to write, the items which I am discussing. Um, but you should do it in your notebook, do not simply read, when you write automatically, you can learn that. So, you do not have to read it two, three times again and again. So, just do all these in your notebook. Illustration 27, the first one, accrued incomes. You remember this particular item uh, we discussed under the subhead other current assets. The last topic, I had asked you to mark these examples. Other current assets, the major head will be current assets. Uh, then provision for employee benefits. See, we discussed this item as a short term provision, but if you look into the answer, they have written it as long term provision. Uh, provision for employee benefits means provision for wages, salary or any other welfare expenses for the welfare of the employees. Um, so, basically if nothing is mentioned, you treat it as long term. Understood that it is kept for a longer period because we will be making payment only after a period of one year. That is an assumption we are taking. Even if you write it as short term provisions, current liability, you will be getting marks. But uh, usually this provision for employee benefits to be taken as long term. So, the answer is long term provision, other non-current, sorry, long term provision is the subhead. The major head is non-current liabilities. Then loose tools I am not discussing because already we have discussed in previous question. Unpaid dividend also we have come across before. Uh, fifth one short term loans that you have to write. Short term loans uh, which will be the subhead for short term loans. It is short term borrowing and the major head will be current liabilities. Then long term loans uh, just the reverse. I mean you have to take it as long term borrowings and non current liabilities. Then illustration number 
uh, 30 will go through all items because yes all items are new so illustration 30 you must do completely so do it as a separate question okay uh, so we'll discuss this bills receivable bills receivable coming under the subhead trade receivables the major head will be um, current assets okay then second one is sundry debtors the same subhead is trade receivables the major head is current asset then long term investments the question itself says the answer long term investments so the subhead is non current investments and the major head is non current assets shares in listed companies shares in listed companies means you are holding shares of other companies meaning is you have invested your amount in their company that's why you are holding shares understood you are holding shares it's not the share capital and all it's a kind of investment for you okay so investment again the same thing it's same like long term investments and for nothing is mentioned investment is taken as uh, non current always so subhead will be non current investments uh, the major head will be uh, non current assets then prepaid insurance it is written as an example of other current assets you can see that um, under that format of uh, balance sheet under asset section we have discussed this prepaid insurance other current assets current asset is the major head uh, then deposits with customs authorities you remember the long term loans and advances the security deposit which we discussed there it's the same thing here i told you uh, when you take an electricity connection or telephone connection you will have to pay an advance amount that is treated as security deposit and it is long term in nature if nothing is mentioned so here deposits with custom authorities means the same thing same item so the major head and subhead subhead will be um, same like your security deposits that is long term loans and advances and the major head will be non current assets then stores and spares we have discussed before current investments coming don't write it as non current investments and all you will make mistake for current investments don't make careless mistake current investment coming under cash and cash equivalents isn't it i have told you that five items coming under ca uh, ca cash and cash equivalents so current investments it is subhead it subhead is cash and cash equivalents the major head is current asset then livestock means farm animals which will be considered as an asset for us for the firm of the company so livestock major uh, the subhead will be which will be the subhead for livestock it is an asset and it is a fixed asset isn't it and it is tangible which we can see and touch so the subhead is fixed tangible assets the major head is non current assets then the last one mature debentures uh, if it is simply given like debentures you can write long term borrowings uh, non current liabilities here it is mature debentures means did i tell you an example like a uh, bank loan which is to be repaid only after 5 years the total amount 10 lakhs but first year suppose if you pay 1 lakh this year itself that 1 lakh will be current current liability so the same thing mature debentures means it has become due for payment this year within this particular year so that is other current liability major head is current liabilities then um illustration 32 so now i am discussing just the new items uh, illustration 32 there is bonds bonds just like debentures so long term borrowings non current liabilities okay so when you write in your notebook also just write these new items only new items if you are comfortable with all other items comfortable means if you are thorough with other items then loans repayable on demand on demand means i have told you that is current so it's coming under short term borrowings current liabilities um then we have buildings trademarks all those you can write then raw materials raw materials will come under inventory just like stores and spares and the major head will be current asset 
then illustration 33 bank od bank overdraft again it is current in nature it's kind of borrowing for us so short term borrowings current liability is the major hit then check in hand cash at bank is also referred as check in hand so that is coming under the subhead cash and cash equivalents major head will be current asset then loose tools you know it's part of inventory then long term provisions long term provision the subhead will be the same understood uh, if you have like provision for employee benefits we wrote long term provision as the subhead here long term provision is given as the item subhead also the same so subhead is long term provision the major head is non current liabilities then illustration 24 the second item that we discussed before that is calls in advance didn't i tell you interest on calls in advance and calls in advance having the same answer the subhead will be other current liabilities major head will be current liabilities um, then trademarks that is intangible asset that you know draft in hand that same like check in hand so cash and cash equivalents current assets so at least the new items you must write don't read it from the textbook you will get confused so when you write it's easier for you to remember then illustration 36 um, the first one you know prepaid insurance we discussed in previous question next is investment in debentures investment means again it is non-current investment and non-current assets will be the major hit then next one that is new item you have to mark it as important which is calls in areas we already discussed calls in advance all these terms we have learned in that chapter shares accounting of share capital uh, so here calls in areas means receivable for us isn't it basically it is an asset but you remember how we showed this item in the balance sheet though the basic nature is a current asset or is an asset actually in areas means receivable so it's an asset calls in advance was liability um, this is an asset but are we showing this particular item under asset side of the balance sheet you just go through that share capital chapter you can see this particular item uh, it's shown as a deduction you have written less calls in areas from the subscribed capital understood so this is coming under not to accounts i mean under subscribed capital the section is subhead is actually subscribed capital subscribed capital is coming under the subhead share capital and this is shown uh, you have to write within brackets by way of deduction okay so subscribed capital put a hyphen and write share capital within brackets you can write notes to accounts then you write within brackets by way of deduction don't buy heart just see how we wrote in the chapter shares so you can easily learn um, so it is less calls in areas okay so basic nature is asset but we are showing it as deduction from um, liability that is so major head will be shareholders fund because the subhead is subscribed capital then next one is um, capital work in progress okay capital work in progress we have the same subhead we have seen this particular item under that fixed assets classification so the subhead is the same capital work in progress the major head will be not fixed assets major head you must write non current assets then patents being developed by the company you remember the classification of fixed assets tangible intangible capital work in progress and intangible assets under development so this particular item patents being developed so it is in progress so the subhead is intangible assets under development don't simply write intangible assets first you write fixed assets put a hyphen and write intangible assets under development you must mention if you simply write intangible assets meaning is it is finished item so this is in progress you must specify intangible assets under development major head is non current assets then uh, illustration 37 only one item is new the fourth item interest due on calls in areas okay calls in areas the basic nature is asset but uh, we are showing it as a deduction from subscribed capital 
interest on calls in areas or interest due on calls in areas we are considering or we are showing it directly on the asset side no deduction nothing so interest due on calls in areas uh, the subhead is other current assets the major head is current asset so that also you have to write the new items um, i discussed now so you have to write at least those items that is compulsory if you want you can do the entire illustration but at least new items must be there in your notebook mm, then we have statement of piantel and all that we discussed in previous video um, all those portions you can just read no need to go into detail no theory question will be asked like that then uh, page 1.50 you have objectives essentials of financial statement parties interested in financial statement limitations of financial statement again uh, for one mark question um, you should read this uh, i'll not ask you to by heart this you just read this all these theory portions when you get time you go through this at least because for one mark question they'll be asking all these okay it's not like they'll not ask you give any objective of financial statement at all usually they'll not ask but you must have an idea so just read this these theory portions again main focus on problems okay so with that we are winding up this chapter chapter 1 of this volume is over uh, not only chapter 1 all chapters of this volume uh, all chapters are over now see we have like second chapter financial statement analysis there also you have some objectives of analyzing objectives then limitations of doing analysis all those limitations objectives the points at least you study the main points explanation and all you can uh, write in your words so just read these theory portions okay for one mark only you'll be getting anyways for eight marks nobody will ask you theory questions so we are winding up this textbook actually volume 3 is over